Okay, so we're checking out another um, iFlight frame here, 5-inch frame, the XL5 Lowrider V3 unibody <laughs> race frame. So, yeah, the XL5 is like one of their freestyle frames. It um, comes in a different variety of versions, and now they've come out with a unibody version of this. Kind of reminds you of like how sort of an alien style frame, if I believe right. So, if my memory might be wrong here, but let's just take a look at what we got here. Okay, so in the box you get your standard stuff here. You got a couple of battery straps. Now they, they're not sending up the black ones now, so the red ones they used to send out. You got some foam feet here. It goes under the arms for helping on the landing. Got the, a foam battery pad. That goes on top of the top plate. And we have some M3 screws. And I think this might be TPU mounts for maybe a micro camera and we have some more hardware here some very short standoffs so low riders i think this is like 15 millimeters 20 millimeters and yeah you got your screws got some extra spacers in there we'll look at all that here in a second and we got another um, adapter here for a looks like a micro camera mount okay so this is the explosion diagram so i did do, I do a review on the xl5 low rider a while back but that one was with individual arms and uh, sandwich plates, so that would go underneath there. Um, obviously now we got a unibody, so it's obviously they're going, going for a lighter weight setup here. But if you break an arm, you know, you're know you going to have to replace the bottom plates. So that is a downside. So it's a trade-off. If you want to get more performance, a little bit lighter weight, then you're going to have to uh, go to a unibody and sacrifice durability possibly. So something to keep in mind. Four millimeter bottom plates. You got some two millimeter uh, ca uh, camera side plates there. Two millimeter top plate. Um, yeah, and it shows basic hardware here. You got some M3 screws. Six millimeters goes on top. The standoffs here are 22 millimeter M3 uh, standoffs and then the eight millimeter screws go on the bottom. So uh, putting this together is uh, pretty straightforward. There's nothing, nothing complicated here at all. Okay, so got the carbon pieces out of the bag. There's only four of them, so very simple. And like all iFlight frames, all of the edges are a little bit chamfered or just sort of smoothed out, so there's no real sharp edges here. You can rub the edges here, no problem. And they do, do wash it so you don't get a lot of carbon dust like you do on some other uh, cheaper frames out there. But yeah, they got the logo painted on there, looks like. And here's the the bottom plate and let's see is it cut along it looks like they cut along the weave so it should have pretty good strength here in the arm yeah i'm not liking the screw holes where they are here or the placement here obviously they got uh, four on each side for the standoffs but eh, i mean it's probably not that big of a deal i don't see it it's not flexing at all the frame's pretty stiff yeah it's going to take a pretty hard crash to break it, but obviously you crash this hard enough, it will break. I can guarantee it. Nothing's indestructible. But yeah, the arms are nicely beveled as well. Very clean. Whatever cutter they're using, router, CNC machines, it's always really good. There's no burring, no carbon splinters like you'll get on some cheaper frames. That's always a, a bummer when I get some of those cheaper frames. And you get those carbon splinters in your hands, it's the worst. Okay, so yeah, it took me about five minutes to put this together. As you can see, just top plate, two camera side plates, bottom plate, and then you have eight standoffs there. And yeah, there's really not much to see here. Um, there's this big cutout here on the bottom. So I guess that's for some space to pivot the camera up. And then, you know, yeah, some of it might stick below here. So something to keep in mind. Depending on what size camera you have, but yeah, the 
can see the mount holes for the camera plate. It has the sliding mechanisms. You have a center hole here, and there we go. It's the center hole, and then you have those two pivot points there to lock in your angle. And you got a nice big cutout here on top, so you should be able to get plenty of angle. In terms of a GoPro mount here, depends on how much angle you're going to be using for freestyle. You know, um, I think there are some GoPro mounts for the XL5 up on Thingiverse already. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll fit this one, but I'm pretty sure it probably will. It's a similar design frame, but yeah, you're going to have to figure out your camera angle situation here and where the GoPro is going to go with that. Mm, yeah, not a huge amount of space back here for a battery. 13 to 1500 max. Obviously, you're going to have to go for a lighter setup. You have these, these four screw holes here. I thought maybe that's a 20 by 20, but it's not. It's not a 30 by 30. It's, so I'm not exactly sure what those screw holes are for. Uh, I could mount something there. You could use this uh, slots here for some zip ties. Got your SMA antenna hole back here. But you probably want to use something back here like a TPU antenna thing here and have the antenna go up at an angle. I'd rather have that. Um, and you got some more zip tie holes here on the bottom to mount like a mini video transmitter. And yeah, I don't think this is 20 by 20 here. This is 20 by 20 here and 30 by 30. That's where you're going to mount your stack. And you have 22 millimeters of space for a stack. So three boards max, probably 400 EC flight controller and then maybe a video transmitter in the back there and a micro camera in the front. And then you're obviously like 220X motors, 2200 series motors here on the, maybe some uh, skinny ESCs on the arms if you want to go that route. There were a bunch of extra screws and stuff that I didn't use here. So uh, you have some spares, obviously the nylon standards are for your stack if you want to use those. And then these guys here, I think this is going to be used with this camera mounting system here because that is this is wider than uh, 19 millimeters. So you're going to need that adapter there. Otherwise, I think it's gonna, this is for like a full size, maybe. Let's see how many. So it's about 20, it looks like about 27 millimeters size size. That's a full size camera, actually, not a micro camera. So I think that's what these adapters are for, to convert it from full size to micro. So you, I, I'm not sure if these are included or not. I hope they are. Um, and then I think these guys here, if you want to use, if you don't want to use the carbon side plates, you could possibly use these and stick them on the standoffs there and, and mount a micro camera in there somehow, perhaps. Yeah, that this one I've never seen before, so I'm not exactly sure how this is going to be used. So um, if you guys know, let me know in the comments below. But yes, yeah, just the frame and let's see how much it weighs. Okay, so frame is coming in at 90 and a half grams. I'd say it's pretty light for a freestyle frame. And let's give you your standard measurements here. So motor to motor diagonally is about 241, 242 millimeters. Uh, the front to back is about 170 millimeters. And side to side is also 170 millimeters. So this is a true X frame. Anyway, it's going to do it for this video for the uh, iFlight XL5 Lowrider V3. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. The unibody frame, obviously the trade-off of lighter weight versus durability is going to be the common theme in the comments, I think. But yeah, this could be pretty nice little uh, freestyle slash racing frame if you do a top-mounted battery situation. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.